So um, this technique was popularized by Andrew Wilty, uh, and he would class so many people's guards like this, and we're gonna like, start off with this, and then we're gonna see how this is gonna uh, go into our pressure classes. So I'm gonna have a notch right over here. Okay, so guys, usually when we're going for the headquarters position, this is like what's known as a headquarters position here, where his knees are facing up, and I'm sitting on one of the hooks, and I have one of my legs in between, right? This is like a very standard. The variation that we're going to be focusing on is getting to a headquarters where I'm making sure that my partner is on their side and on one hip. Now, this is uh, favorable towards me, because now they're facing towards my right, their left, and now their backside is going to be exposed, particularly to knee cuts. And when I'm knee cutting this way, it's going to be very hard for them to follow and bring this knee in as an issue or this foot as a foot on my, on my shoulder. So for example, if I'm here, and then I start to go for a knee cut, it's very easy for Nas to follow me and put his knee there, or as I'm going, he can also put his foot onto my shoulder. Exactly, like this, all right? So, playing like this, exactly. So now, he's able to kind of block me. But, if I'm able to put him onto his hip like this, when I'm going for my last knee cut, now, as you can see, I bypass that knee, it's very difficult for him to get this leg in front of me in any way because it was facing the opposite direction, right? So, a few ideas, guys, and now the class uh, is advanced, so uh, we can explore uh, different options. So, uh, let's say he's in a butterfly leg. Okay, so I can be in front of him, fighting his hands, I can start to move around him, I can start to push him, and as soon as I push him right away, I step in and I stab the back of his knee, putting him onto a hip. I can do that. Maybe he's playing open guard with his feet up. All right? So I can look to get into a good stance, clear his feet, take one step A, and then stab the back of his knee, and put him onto a hip. Maybe he has me in single leg X, right? Okay? Now, I take this foot off, I high step my foot out, and then I stab, and now I end up in this position, uh, right over here. Maybe he has me in double heel guard. Right, exactly. I step back, I clear that hook, I step over, and then I shuffle to the side to put him onto the side. So you can choose your destination on how to get there, okay? I'm gonna choose a simple one. All right, I'm gonna roll his ankles downward, I'm gonna step one and two. From here, he has to grab my ankle. If he doesn't grab my ankle, don't grab my ankle. <clears throat> then I can look to just like pummel my foot on the outside and I can look to, you know, just pass it easily. So they're gonna grab. When they grab, there becomes this big opening for an underfoot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand somewhere in the spot on the hip or sometimes already reaching from the arm. I'm gonna open up their knee, and as my knee goes across their body, my hand goes on the opposite side. So it looks like this, all right? I catch myself as I fall. As soon as I'm here, guys, only a little piece of my toe is stuck, I'm gonna take my knee out, and I'm gonna bring it as close to the hip as possible, okay? One more time. So he's here, I'm gonna roll his ankles downward, I'm gonna step A, B, put him onto the side, he grabs my ankle. Now this gives me my other hook, my hand is gonna go somewhere in that spot. As I blast through, my hand goes right across. Right. I take my foot out, now I cover the head, and I get my Okay, one last time. All right, look something like this. Since you have this arm, guys, you can feel free to step around. You can look for kimars right away. You can look for spinning arm bars. You have a lot of really good uh, attacks on the far side, including back takes, once you get close. Cool, let's warm up with this, guys, and I'm gonna see what he's gonna do as a consequence of this position, and then what I'm gonna be able to do to smash those buttons. All right, let's go. Okay, a lot of people are gonna position their legs in a certain way to stop it. Because they know that you're just gonna be able to just like blast uh, through their guard. Okay? So once I'm here, I put Nas down, I step A and I, I step B. If his knee is at my chest or at my outside hip, this side is completely open as you can see. Right? But if he takes his knee and he brings it lower, now his own knee and his shin is blocking my knee from going where uh, I want it to go. But you may ask, like, why would he want to do that? What if he's pushing my shoulder, he scissors this like A, and he kicks this like B, look, he can knock me down. And then he can use that to bring himself up and get his two, all right? Or, once he does that, all right, he knocks me down, I regain my balance, he can kick me away, and then he can pummel into my legs and go into the same leg X, and now starts to thing with my legs. So there's a reason for him to start to try to balance me and try to bring his leg lower, okay? This could be smart for him to do. So, once I'm here, and now, this side is no longer open for me, I'm gonna to go to the opposite side. So I'm gonna lower myself, I'm gonna grab the small of his back, my hand is gonna be just like around the hip area. My chin is gonna to start to go over his thigh, I'm gonna peel his hand and I'm gonna bring my knee in between his legs. Just like that. Guys, it's very important that I land as deep as possible and that my foot is not out. If my foot is out, he can put me on a hip and he can start to tangle with the leg line. So I wanna make sure that I keep my toes hidden, and this knee is as deep as possible facing him, all right? From here, guys, I was grabbing his wrist. 
I'm gonna hide my intentions, all right? I'm gonna put my hand here, all right? Now, I can try to push, but as you can see, the arm doesn't move. So I need a reaction out of him. I'm gonna start to pressure him, and as he pushes me back, I use that as an opportunity to clear that arm and go for a head and arm. Guys, I'm not gonna use this head and arm to choke him, I'm just gonna use this to control him. From here, I'm gonna lift my hips up, I'm gonna go above his knee A, and I'm gonna secure mount B. Once I'm here, I can look to finish arm triangle, or I can just establish a strong mount, and look to cook him, and then look to go to S mount, take his back, etc. Okay, so again, once more. So now this is on his back, I clear his ankles, I step in, he grabs my leg. Now I notice his knee's a little bit lower. Sometimes, guys, you can even push his leg lower as well, if you wanna start to do this move. I'm gonna start to peel his wrist, my chin is gonna go down, and I'm grabbing his lower back as I switch my knees, and peel that grip. I take a big step. My hand is gonna go off his wrist and it's gonna go to his neck. Guys, sometimes you get lucky and his frame is like a little weak and his arm is connected to his body. If I bring my chest over his elbow, now it starts to push me, he finds that it's pretty hard, all right? If his elbow is away from his body and he has a strong frame, then it's gonna be hard to push it. So what you need to do is you have to go into them and one second, one second, wait for me. You have to go into them and as they push back, you use that as an opportunity to clear. From here, you have the mount, okay, or you also have a one-handed back take. I can grab the knee of his delt, of his back, his trap, somewhere along this line, and then as I mount on him, I'm using this as a base, and now look, I go nice and high bias here, lift him up, connect my hands on the seat belt, go onto my side, and I can pull my second hook, and I can take his back to So you have a lot of really strong opportunities as soon as you uh, clear his arm and you get into that arm triangle position. Obviously, you can finish as well. Cool? Let's get a try.